Hello and welcome to the PCC Cup Series first European exhibition of the season. Christopher Loxanen is on the pole for this race in the number 73 Alteris Gessler GP. Uh, Gessler. So, uh, the European exhibitions, these races are set up to uh, prepare the European uh, drivers for their big race, which is uh, the overcapacity event at Vnukovo Airport. All of the drivers that were entered in this race get a free pass um, to uh, get an entry into that race. So all of these cars will be seen later in the season at Vnukovo Airport when they try to qualify against the PCC Cup Series regulars. Uh, the PCC European exhibitions tie into their own championship called PCC Europe, which uh, they earn a they earn points, and there is a PCC Europe champion that will be crowned at the end of the season. So it's going to be interesting to see how these drivers react to that and uh, how they take the fight to each other and try and battle for the championship uh, starting here today at Illibianki. As I mentioned before, Christopher Loxanen is your pole sitter and he brings the field down to the green flag, getting himself five points in the PCC Europe uh, standings. Uh, the point system for PCC Europe is a little different than that that's used in the normal PCC Cup Series. Uh, only the top 20 get points every week, so these drivers will be competing uh, very viciously for that uh, 20th spot uh, as uh, Christopher Loxon continues to pull away from Sergei Yakovsky, who has sufficiently healed from that accident he had at Decatur last year. Here are the 990 and 991 of Davies Flimflam and Joha Vovacic, and uh, well, they're quite off the pace. I'm surprised they were allowed to start, to be entirely honest, uh, as they've already lost the main pack. Here in fifth place, uh, somebody who we haven't seen since Decatur last year, is uh, David Hetzel, uh, driving the 992 for Vovacic Racing Incorporated. Uh, he's acting as sort of a driver coach uh, for his team owner, but uh, considering where his team owner is running, I don't think that's uh, working too well for him. However, I think David Hetzel... Uh, is just glad to be back at the racetrack and he's running in fifth place doing an excellent job in that number 992 uh, Skype journey uh, doing a good job uh, there. Here's the Cleveland Grand Prix second place finisher last year Calvin Hobbs making contact with uh, Sophie Agonasta Pop uh, so I can't say that uh, Hinkley Scarberry makes contact with Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer uh, they continue on fine here's uh, Christopher Loxanen continuing to lead uh, doing an excellent job. Uh, he's known for his qualifying prowess. He won poles in most of the races he started last season. He won the pole for the Cleveland Grand Prix. Uh, I believe he also won the pole for Karyala, if I remember correctly. And, uh, well, his PCC Cup Series uh, experience is uh, actually quite uh, quite limited, even though he, he only ran one full season in 2011 and then uh, returned to uh, rally cars and sports cars, but he's dabbled occasionally in coming back, um, and he's been doing a fine job whenever he does appear again. Here's Carolina Storman making contact with Louis Philippe Goslin. She runs that final turn wide, and she's going to lose a couple positions there. Uh, Davius Flimflam going a lap down on lap number 5 of 50. So that tells you just how slow he's been. Uh, I would not be surprised if he was about 10 laps down at the end of this race, to be entirely honest. Um, kind of surprised that they let him start anyways. Davies Flim Flam, uh, whose uh, origins, uh, I'm not really sure where he's from. He keeps putting different locations on the entry sheets every time he shows up. Joha Vovacic going a lap down, uh, not far after he did, after Flim Flam did. Here's uh, Conceso Montiero. Uh, Portuguese driver driving for BBN Racing, and uh, this is Lenore Scurry team, Lenore Scurry's team from last season. She's running up in sixth place on lap number six, doing a fine job. And uh, here is uh, Sergei Yakovsky running in second place, sufficiently healed after that accident at Decatur last season, where uh, his car was hit multiple times, head up the S's. Uh, he has recovered from that, and uh, is doing a fine job. It appears that he has recovered 100% and uh, is committed to uh, really hunting down uh, Christopher Loxon in here as Davies Flim Flam goes down another lap on lap number 8. So, uh, well, he went a uh, second lap down faster than he went down the first lap, so 
this doesn't look too promising for him. Uh, Mark Donovan currently holds down the 20th and final points paying position. Uh, Mark Donovan, we saw him at New York last time, and uh, well, he he uh, was performing pretty well until his engine blew. So uh, Retro 80 Racing decided to send him out here uh, to Europe to uh, try and win the championship out here. Unfortunately, they have stretched themselves thin, as uh, that means each week they're going to be running seven cars. So uh, I don't know if they have the resources to do that. Here's Jan Schmidt, who we had seen before uh, last season. I believe he ran Brno and a couple other races, uh, driving for Alteris Gessler GP. However, he was outshone. Uh, by his teammate Christopher Loxen in, in all of those attempts. And that continues to be the case here as uh, well, he's battling for third place right now with uh, Leonid Chernov in that number 66 car. Uh, Leonid Chernov, the only Rotanistani driver in the field. Uh, Nikolai Malyenki, the second place finisher from Brno, kicks off green flag pit stops. Fairly early, I believe this is only lap 11 from 13th place, driving for his own team. Uh, the Diaval Energy Katsiv uh, sponsorship has stuck around. Here's Giuseppe Balducci on lap number 11, uh, driving for Scuderia Italia as that car appears to have a problem. He's going to pull that car off to the side of the track and uh, get a tow back to the pits. No caution will be thrown, uh, only a local yellow will be thrown, and they're going to get him towed back to the pits and get that car fixed up, he will return to the race. Uh, Christopher Loxon now has opened up a massive lead. Uh, he's trying to lap the number 608 after he dove onto pit road. So uh, that just tells you how far he is in front of uh, everyone else and uh, how slow the rest of the field is compared to him if, uh, he's lapping this, if he's trying to lap the 608 after he made a pit stop from top 15. So uh, if you look back there, I think that's uh, Sergei Yakovsky. That's coming around. Yes, it is. Uh, so I guess he's not too far in front of Yakovsky, but he puts the 608 a lap down and uh, continues on his way. Here's Koopy. Uh, uh, this is this is the brother of Koopy Winslow. This is Mercedes Winslow. Uh, sorry, I get these two brothers confused. Uh, they both dominate uh, whatever series they're running in. I believe they're both open wheel regulars. So. Uh, this is Mercedes Winslow, and he's running in uh, seventh place right now, right in front of Louis Ballard. And there's some smoke pouring out there from David Hetzel. David Hetzel's gone up in smoke from uh, fifth place here on lap number 13. What a heartbreak for him. He was having uh, <laughs> the run of his career, doing an excellent job in this number 992 car. It looked like he was set for a top five finish, but unfortunately there were a lot the unreliability, I should say, of these cars uh, really struck back and uh, Davius Flim Flam just went another lap down, so that just uh, tells you how horrible his day has been. Gracie Benson now driving for 7th Gear Autosport. Uh, this is a new three car team, uh, is running in 8th place on lap number 14, doing a fine job. And here we've got the 95s uh, of Mark Ambrose and uh, Nicholas Marchenkov, who apparently has better equipment this year since he's running so far up. There's David Hetzel. Mark Ambrose commits to the pit lane following him in. And uh, that's, I believe that's uh, another green flag pit stop. That was a battle for 19th place. Uh, Mark Ambrose follows uh, Hetzel into the pit lane. And I believe that's Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer there in the background who's also pitting. Um, here's Louis Ballard, who's uh, doing an excellent job trying to hunt down Mercedes Winslow as uh, he uses Davies Flim Flam as a pick, and he's going to get around uh, Mercedes Winslow up to sixth place now. So Louis Ballard's starting to make headway through the field. Uh, Louis Ballard, uh, all this season, has been locked in a, in uh, the Manticore Engineering basement with a bunch of uh, crappy EA games to bide his time. So I think he's just glad to be back on the racetrack. Here's uh, Sophie Agonastopoulos. That's how you say it. Uh, excuse me for that uh, previous mess up. But she dives into the pits, uh, driving for V Racing in the 23 car. One of the few times you're not going to see Zach Tech associated with the 23. Uh, she pits from, uh, I believe, like 23rd position or so. Here comes, uh, I believe this is Sergei Yakovsky in the number 61 car, pitting from second place on lap number, uh, lap number 17. Mercedes Winslow brings uh, his car in and... Uh, Christopher Loxanen comes in and pits 
on lap number 19, bringing his car down pit road. And uh, I think that's uh, Davies Flimflam coming in. Jan Schmidt comes in. Uh, Lena Chernov comes in. But Canseso Montiero stays out. Canseso Montiero rolling the dice. I believe these drivers are on a three-stop pit strategy right now, but Canseso Montiero is going to roll the dice and stay out. You see the rest of the leaders, uh, rest of the front runners coming in. I believe that's Franz Bergman there in the background who also stayed out. So two drivers deciding to roll the dice and try to go for a two-stop strategy. Canseso Montiero driving for BBN Racing, which was Lenore Scurry's team last season. Uh, switched manufacturers to Juno and picked her up, and she is the leader now on lap number 19. So what a move, and this might pay off big. This might be big dividends for this number 68 team as uh, she currently leads the field here. And oh, what a point stay this could be if she can stay out front. Uh, Bergman now up to second place in this number 79, uh, number 79 Eichholz, excuse me about that. Um, but he uh, he's doing quite a good job. Doesn't quite have the pace of Montiero, but uh, I'm gonna, it's gonna be interesting to see if he can hold off uh, some of the front runners like Loxanen, who you can see there uh, in the background starting to hunt him down a bit. Uh, Bergman, I think, might be able to hold on uh, for a little bit, but uh, Loxanen is quite fast and catching him by about a second or two each lap. So uh, I don't know how long Bergman is going to be able to hold off Loxanen, who came out of the pits in third place, uh, not far behind Bergman. As you can see, Bergman there uh, starting to lose quite a bit of ground to Loxanen. And uh, well, coming down the straightaway here, uh, Loxanen's going to pull up alongside Bergman. Is he going to be able to make the move? I think he might be. Yep, he outbreaks Bergman. And uh, Loxanen will take over the second position from Franz Bergman there, entering turn number one on lap number 20. So uh, Loxanen up to second place. Here's uh, Gracie Benson, who had a terrible pit stop, and she, belt, and she fell back to uh, 12th place now. Now Bergman under attack by uh, uh, Sergei Yakovsky here, and he's going to fall back to fourth place now. So uh, Franz Bergman's strategy didn't exactly go uh, as uh, planned as he was hoping, but still, uh, positions are positions, and he's running in the top five right now. Here's the 43 of Salvatore Torregrossa running in eighth place, having a fine run here today. A um, bit more funding jumped on board this 43 car and the 42 car. So uh, we might see them in more PCC Cup Series races, not just these European exhibitions this season. Here's uh, Branimir Nikolaev running in ninth place on lap 23. Uh, this is another seventh gear auto sport car. Uh, and Branimir Nikolaev, the Bulgarian driver, doing a fine job. Uh, I believe he is the best running of the seventh gear cars here today. Uh, you see a Mercedes Winslow right behind him in 10th place. Uh, doing a fine job as well. His brother Vital wins lol. I haven't seen uh, really yet so far. He hasn't been performing as well as I'd expected. Uh, Canseso Montiero has a 22 second lead here on lap number 25. Uh, trying to pull away. But unfortunately her, uh, her lead has been reduced by a bit um, in the past few laps. Here's Calvin Hobbs and he's running in 30th place. A dismal result. For so far for the second place finisher in the Cleveland Grand Prix uh, possibly bringing up uh, the argument that that might have been a fluke. Jan Schmidt now trying to make a move on Franz Bergman for a fifth position he hooks him off in the final S's and they both go into the tire walls from fourth and fifth place and Bergman is done what a heartbreak for Franz Bergman who had a quite a good run going he looked like he might have been able to get a top 5 or a top 10 result and Jan Schmidt's impatience just takes him right out of the race as Bergman and Schmidt both go into the tire walls on board uh, Schmidt there and now on board Bergman. Uh, the two countrymen fighting over this position and unfortunately it ends with both getting turned into the outside wall. As you can see right there, Bergman's day is done. The front end is absolutely destroyed. Now Louis Ballard, uh, picking up the pieces, has moved up to fifth place after this. Uh, I guess all that practice on those crappy EA games has done some good for him. As now here's, uh, here's a dogfight for 20th place between these six cars here. Uh, that's uh, Sean Spicoli who's leading the group there. 
uh, driving for Retro 80 Racing in the 82 car. Um, for Ramsey Cockiner has uh, uh, seven cars in that group. Uh, Ramsey Cockiner normally drives the 82, but Retro 80 Racing decided to bring an 82 car uh, here to the European Exhibition in an, an apparent attempt to claim all numbers from uh, 80 to 89. I don't know if they're going to be able to pull that off, though, in uh, in uh, PCC Cup Series competition normally. Uh, but here is Christopher Loxon and getting ready to put uh, Calvin Hobbs a lap down, so that just shows you how dismal his day has been. Uh, Concesso Montiero brings her car into the pits finally on uh, lap number 29. So uh, it looks like she can make it with just a one-stop strategy uh, to the end of the race if she can hold out fine. And if she does, this is going to be a huge result for the 68 team. Uh, look, look for this car to potentially uh, challenge for the win if she can uh, really hang on here today. Uh, Loxanen now trying to lap Calvin Hobbs, pulls the pass off, and is the leader once again. So Calvin Hobbs now a lap down. Looks like Hinkley Scarberry is about to go a lap down, driving for Retro 80 Racing. But it looks like uh, Sergei Kofsky has closed the gap quite a bit on uh, Christopher Loxanen. Looks like Joha Vovacic has a problem here in the 991. Uh, never said that these cars were very reliable, and uh, well, it looks like uh, Vovasic's day might be over. He was quite a few laps down at that point, and uh, I can only imagine that it's going to get worse. Now, uh, Conceso Montiero has fallen back to 8th place in this number 68 car, uh, battling with Mercedes Winslow and Michael Grant back there. I believe uh, there's a couple cars in front of her that were running quite well. Speaking of Michael Grant, uh, the Russia winner from last season. He's entered this race with his own team, uh, Fixed It Racing, driving for, uh, well, his own team, driving a Chevy Impala. Uh, he won at uh, Russia with uh, Australian Motorsports last season. And, uh, well, unfortunately, they did not retain him, so he has started his own team and is running the European exhibitions. Uh, Nikolai Malyanki kicks off green flag pit stops by pitting once again on lap number 31 as now looks like Christopher Loxon is starting to lap up to uh, up, uh, quite a few guys. Ed Boddicker now. Uh, Aaron Williams dove into the pit lane. She's had a miserable run here today. And uh, well look at all these cars that uh, Loxon has put a lap down and all that has uh, really been put between him and Yakovsky now so far as looks like Chernov is going to bring his car into the pits here on lap number 35 from the top five. He's had an excellent run so far today. Unfortunately, uh, Yakovsky has kind of overshadowed him. Ballard brings his car into the pits the next lap. I believe that's Jan Schmidt, uh, Tora Grossa, uh, and one of the Winslow brothers back there. As the next lap, looks like uh, Christopher Loxon is going to bring his car into the pits and hand the lead back over to Conceso Montiero. So Montiero now up front once again here on uh, lap number 37 doing quite a good job. If this pit strategy uh, if this pit strategy holds out then uh, I think this entire team deserves a pat on the back because that is an excellent performance uh, to really hold off all the front runners here today. I did not expect to see her uh, have qu uh, quite this good of a run. Uh, the car was definitely a top 10 car in practice, but I did not expect to see this here today as Nikolai Malyanki's car goes up in smoke from 12th place. Uh, he is uh, he's driving for his own team, and uh, unfortunately the engine that he had just couldn't hold out for the 50 laps that this race uh, is going on for. Uh, lap number 37, he's going to drop out of the race from 12th place. Tough break for him. Now here we are, 12 laps from the finish, and it looks like there's going to be a good battle for third between Louis Ballard and uh, Leonid Chernov there in the number 66 car. Uh, Chernov has been trying to hold off uh, Ballard, but Ballard's car has come to life and is uh, it appears to be faster than the Rus Autosport cars now. Here late in the going, uh, Leonid Chernov holds him off there for now. Conceso Montiero now, uh, she runs that turn a bit wide, makes some contact with Carolina Storman, and brings her car into the pit lane. Something's wrong with the 68 car, it appears, 
either that or she just couldn't make it the rest of the way on fuel. They didn't get enough fuel in the car. I'm not sure why she's pitting, but uh, it looks like that's going to hand the lead back over to Christopher Loxanen, and a Cinderella story is going to go down the drain. Now Louis Ballard makes a move on the outside of that final S, and he is going to take over second position now from Leonid Chernov there, and uh, well, Christopher Loxanen now, however, uh, holds quite a lead over everyone else. So uh, this is going to be interesting to see. Sergei Yakovsky faded late and has fallen back to, uh, I believe he's fallen back to third position. Uh, third or fourth position now, he had a bad pit stop. As here's Gracie Benson. Oh, he tried to get around Gracie Benson and Gracie Benson threw a block and he spun Benson in anger. Christopher Loxanen now with just a few laps to go, with five laps to go. Here comes Louis Ballard. Louis Ballard trying to make a move on the inside. Loxanen in the grass, and Ballard passes Loxanen for the lead. Here with just five laps to go. So can Loxanen try and catch up to Ballard, or is Ballard going to hang on and win this? Gracie Benson had been blocking Ballard for the past few laps, but seems to let Ballard go fine. Uh, uh, Benson now on the inside trying to battle back, trying to stay on the lead lap. Uh, for some reason, not sure why she wants to do that, uh, but she lets uh, Ballard go by fine, and uh, I think she's going to continue to go back to blocking Loxanen for some reason. Uh, she had been blocking him for about the last five laps, uh, blocking Loxanen, and uh, well, she just let Ballard go by fine, so I think Ballard has it home free here if, uh, if Loxanen cannot get around Benson. So you can see just how much Ballard is pulling away right there. Here's Ed Boddicker running in the final points position, running in 20th place right now here in the closing laps of the race. I believe he's going to get the final point unless something happens to him. Uh, so uh, Boddicker driving for Delta City Racing is going to get a point. And Louis Ballard coming out of the final turn is going to take uh, the win here today at Illibianchi, uh, netting quite a few points in the process. Now looking at results here. Uh, Christopher Loxanen won the pole, led the most laps, did everything he could. Uh, however, that could only tie him with Louis Ballard, who won the race. Leonid Chernoff, third place, had an excellent run. Uh, Sergei Yakovsky had a bad pit stop late and fell down to fourth place. Branimir Nikolaev, give a round of applause to him, finishing in the top five for that seventh gear autosport team. Kansesa Montero, unfortunately, fell down to sixth, and her pit strategy could not work out. Uh, quite as well as she was hoping. Michael Grant finishes a strong seventh uh, after wrecking uh, Franz Bergman. Jan Schmidt falls back to eighth place. Uh, Salvatore Torre Grossa has a strong run finishing in ninth. Louis Philippe Goslin, the uh, Monegasque driver, rounds out the top ten. Daria Aliwi, driving for uh, Williams Racing Team, uh, finishes in eleventh, had a very quiet run. So did uh, Koopy Winslow there in the 081 car. Uh, finishing in 12th place. Didn't talk about him all day. Um, the 373 of Carolina Storman finished in 13th place. Mark Donovan, 14th. Uh, Sean Spicoli finished in 15th. Uh, Mark Ambrose, 16th. Marius Rutger, uh, the teammate to uh, Franz Bergman, finished in 17th. Murphy Weller, 18th. Gracie Benson in 19th. And Ed Boddicker rounds out your top 20, scoring one point. Uh, Mercedes Winslow, who was running in the top 20 uh, for the majority of the race, uh, stalled out on pit road and lost a couple of laps due to that, and unfortunately did not finish uh, nearly as well as he was hoping.